so hi, I'm uh, René. I'm a PhD student in, in Marburg in Germany, working on synthetic biology in chloroplast. And um, yeah, uh, Dennis already introduced many of the, the concepts we need for understanding MoClo, but I would like to um, go a little bit uh, more into detail in some aspects and also in the end come to um, some practical part. Um, just to kind of repeat uh, the advantages of using MoClo or Golden Gate. Um, and I would uh, really push the, the part point in, in comparison to, to Gibson. In, ca in case of Gibson, um, you don't have real parts and they are not as exchangeable as uh, in case of MoClo or uh, Golden Gate. And especially if you have to adjust the expression level of, uh, of many genes of interest uh, in case of metabolic engineering pro project, genetic circuit projects, I would really uh, uh, recommend using uh, this technique. And people have already pushed their technique to, to assemblies up to 24 parts so, uh, in an efficient manner. And another advantage is that if you have created the, the small parts, it's not completely necessary to check the, the, the sequence completely with sequencing because you, you already know that your parts are correct, um, uh, or at least the, 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 the part sequence is correct. That's, that's something if you really want to scale your assemblies and you, you're creating 150 constructs, then you, you don't have to uh, sequence everything. However, uh, in the beginning, I would totally recommend uh, to sequence everything uh, to avoid using wrong plasmids. Um, but uh, like errors due to PCR, which occur in, in case of Gibson, assemb uh, Gibson assembly, do not occur in, in case of modular cloning. And the whole thing is totally uh, um, achievable in a high throughput manner and can be automated. But that's something which doesn't matter to many iGEM teams. Um, the, the, the whole thing or the whole technique of Golden Gate Assembly and MoClo was developed in 20 L, uh, tw uh, tw 2011, if you want to look that up. And in that time, it was kind of, uh, yeah, too much for many groups. And it took some time until it took off. And um, today, and that's especially also interesting for you, already a lot of toolboxes exist. So you don't have to invent the wheel from scratch. So uh, there are many toolboxes for different chassis, for different organisms, which you can just uh, get from uh, from Edgene or um, even on the iGEM registry, um, uh, where you can already get some some promoters, RBS, and the, the basic parts you need to do uh, modular cloning in that manner. So check check on that. Just uh, search for it, and you will probably find a toolbox uh, specifically for for your organism of interest. Another thing I would like to point out here is that there are basically two ways of doing this kind of modular cloning. On the left side, you, you can see this hierarchical cloning that you build up complexity um, by every cloning step kind of. So you have your source DNA, your PCR template, then you have basic parts in, on, on level zero, you call it uh, most of the time, and then you assemble them to one transcription unit and then assemble these two multigene plasmids. And that's the hierarchical approach. And then there's, um, on the other hand, on the right side, it, uh, the loop assembly. And um, this works in a way that you uh, add one part or one transcription unit every assembly instead of combining all these in one assembly, which has the advantage that it's a little bit easier for, for beginners to understand the, the whole system. And you do even do not need many parts for that. But on the other hand, you need every, um, for every gene you want to add, you need one round of cloning. So these two sides or these uh, two techniques are 
are present. Uh, this is a slide uh, Dennis already showed, but I would come back to that for a moment. And um, yeah, the, the, the whole principle works like that, that you have everything divided on different plasmids, your basic parts, your promoters, your RBS, your coding sequence, and so on, are on single plasmids, which are called level zero parts. And you combine these single plasmids to a one transcriptional unit, which expresses, for example, one gene, one enzyme, one fluorescent protein. And that's this level one plasmid. And then you combine different level one plasmids in another assembly to the level two, the multi-gene construct. Um, and that can be done in different uh, manners, but uh, the, the basic concept for all these MoClo toolboxes or principles is the same. And you are switching the, the, the enzyme which is used for uh, creating level zero, for creating level one and level two. But we will come to that in the, in the last part where I explained it in genius. Um, and the, the basic principle of Golden Gate, Dennis already explained. I just want to highlight that all of these parts um, have different um, overhangs or fusion sites, these four base pairs, which are created by these type 2S enzymes. And they are also standardized. So you are not choosing them randomly, but people agreed on, on the standard, the small clause standard, or the another standard I, I will explain in a minute. Um, and uh, this allows really the interchangeability and also the exchange of parts uh, by the item community and also by other labs, which would like to share promoters and so on. And from that standard, people develop these, these toolboxes. Don't be afraid by that figure. These toolboxes uh, for different organisms. And in the end, it's just about connecting the left end to the right end, kind of, and have um, one part for each position. And that's, that allows one part assembly in one part, um, in one tube in the lab. Uh, let's come really quick to, to the, the standards from iGEM. So before 2019, it was the, um, it was not allowed to send in um, type 2S assemblies. It, it was just about uh, biobrick as, uh, assembly parts. And if you want to know more about that, you can watch the video from last week there I explained that, that uh, technique or the, that standard. But um, since last year, the, the type 2S standard is allowed to submit to iGEM. And there we also agreed on the same uh, fusion sites for all these parts um, uh, to submit. So every, every promoter, every RBS has the same four base pairs for the assembly. And um, um, in, in late uh, 2019, there was another standard uh, coming up. And I think uh, that the iGEM headquarters is just planning on that or is about to introduce that. And that's actually the loop assembly, which I, uh, which I mentioned here, that they would like to introduce that uh, the different approach also to the iGEMers and therefore every uh, every part you submit has to be free of BSA1 and also um, sub1 for the loop assembly. Um, yeah, if you want to know more about this loop assembly, you can also go to this uh, iGEM type 2S website. Um, perhaps you can also put a link on the, uh, for that uh, under the, the video or something like that. Um, and that's just another enzyme kind of for that um, level two or the, the multi-gene assembly. Okay, let's uh, do it uh, in a practical session now. Um, and I hope you can see my genius screen. Is it, is it uh, fine, Dennis? Can you see it, my screen? Yep, looks good. Okay, 
So this is just another software and we will try to, to have these sessions in different softwares that you can, can watch the video um, yeah, for the software you would like to use. And just in general, one comment, you, uh, all the software we show, either Benchling, either uh, Genius and Snapgene, uh, are free to use for any iGym student. So you can get free licenses for all these uh, softwares. Benchling is in general free, but also for Genius and Snapgene when you are an iGym student, at least for this year. So uh, if you like one of these programs, just um, go to the iGym website and get the, the license for your favorite program. Okay, let's start with level zero. Level zero is the, the basic part, as I mentioned. So if you would like to, to, to introduce a new ba basic part, let's say you're interested in any uh, fluorescent protein, in any enzyme you would like to express in this modular way, then first of all, you have to create a new level zero part. And that works like that, that you create primers to amplify your gene, for example, or you order it via DNA synthesis. And let's assume we already have designed the primers in the way um, Dennis showed us in the beginning. Um, and this is just the, the binding region, which binds to the sequence uh, of my template. But if you would like to introduce the the new part into the level zero plasmid, you also have to add the overhangs for, for the Moclo assembly. And in general, for the level zero kind of backbone or the uh, level zero universal acceptor vector, it's called, it works like that, that it has the chlorine clinical resistance. Uh, and you have some sort of selection cassette. So in this case, it's, it's a GFP. Um, which is replaced for the part you would like to introduce. And that helps you to identify the correct colonies because if you replace the GFP uh, expression unit here by another PCR product, which is not fluorescent, you can distinguish the correct cloning between white and green colonies. And the, the white colonies are correct and the GFP is replaced and the, of course the green colonies are still the original backbone here. So that's a tool uh, uh, which is commonly used in molecular biology and there are also other other examples what could be in here. So, so for example like set then you just dis, uh, distinguish between blue and white cells um, but uh, in this case it's a, it's, a, it's a GFP. Okay let's say we would like to amplify that M cherry from from that um, from that template plasmid, and would like to introduce that into the Moclo uh, collect in our Moclo collection or in a level zero plot. Then we have to go to our or at least uh, many iGen teams have created kind of their own uh, document for all the overhangs they have to add to their primers. And in that case, you have to choose the correct overhangs kind of um, for, for the different position in the Moclo assembly. So if, for example, if I would like to introduce the M-Cherry, then I use an overhang which is specific for the coding region. And if you would like to introduce, for example, a promoter, you would need a promoter overhang. Okay. And of course, you have different overhangs for forward primers and reverse primers. And uh, first of all, I would copy kind of uh, the, the overhang for the coding region and the forward primer and uh, add it to my um, already existing primer, which I created before that seminar, um, to have that as a primer extension, as an overhang. Um, and that the same goes for, of course, for the, the reverse primer. And in that case, um, I have to copy the reverse complement of that overhang uh, because it's the reverse complement primer. Okay, so that's kind of the first step. And then as Dennis explained, you would order these primers and do a PCR with your template. And I can do that in silico here in, in Genius. 
and I know that's a little bit fast now, but if you would like to uh, uh, really repeat that, you can watch the video again and um, test it with, with your software. So in that case, it's called test with safe primers. And I can choose um, my two primers, which I created. Uh, I, and I can also do something like allow mismatches. And that's something I'm also testing always um, uh, to check if my primers build, bind something uh, somewhere else on the plasmid. Um, and then I can check. And now Genius tells me, okay, you have just two binding sites and they bind perfectly. Uh, well, I have, want to have them binding. And then I extract my PCR product with exactly these primers. And uh, then Genius has the super cool tool. And that's what I really like Genius for of um, Golden Gate assembly. And uh, what, what I would do now is um, mark the PCR product, mark the uh, um, acceptor vector or the level zero plasmid, just click on cloning Golden Gate assembly, and then Genius recognizes everything on its own. Even, and I will show you that for the, the further exam assemblies. And you can choose the different enzymes here. And of course, for level zero, I would use BSMB1. And um, just click OK. And everything else is done by Genius. And now my entry is inserted in the level zero plasmid. And now I would just edit the name level zero and cherry. And we can use that for further assemblies. Okay, let's uh, let's go to le level one assemblies. For level one assemblies, you have these um, assemblies which I mentioned, where you combine promoter, RBS, coding region, terminator, and so on. And um, uh, I have some example um, plasmids here, so just uh, the same parts which I mentioned, promoter, RBS, that's an enzyme, for example, you, you are interested in for any metabolic engineering project, a terminator, and in, in this case, for that specific toolbox which I'm using, I'm using connectors. Um, and in Genius, you can do something really cool. Instead of kind of digesting and ligating everything and or marking all the uh, uh, restriction the enzymes cutting sites, you can just mark all the parts you would like to combine. And in that case, I would like to combine seven different parts and um, uh, just mark all of them, say cloning, go and get assembly. And it also in that case, Genius recognizes all the different uh, Genius um, Golden Gate overhangs and puts them in the correct order even if you haven't clicked them in the correct order. And if it, something doesn't work out, um, um, you can uh, say auto arrange here. But you have to, of course, have to ch uh, change the enzyme here to BSA1 because level one, and that's really standardized for almost all toolboxes, is most of the times BSA1. And in that case, Everything looks fine. Everything is um, correct and green. If you have any error, it's red. Then um, you can click on OK, and it will automatically assemble all these seven plasmids in, in one click, kind of. Um, and now we have created our first level one plasmid, level one, one. Oops. Okay. Okay. This was kind of uh, the the assembly Dennis and and I most of the times talked about. But you can also combine these level one plasmids now for multi gene constructs. So if you want to express more than one gene, and um, we have uh, created this level zero plasmid now, and we will copy that to another level one folder I created in beforehand. And um, 
Then we can do the same thing again. Just mark all of them. Um, say Golden Gate Assembly. Uh, and everything else is fine. And in that case, it's 1.2. And I, I will explain the difference in a minute. And a last time for the third um, level one plasma, I would like to assemble in a level two. Um, yes. Edit name. Okay, the the difference for for that multi gene ex assembly for all these is the following: you can either use backbones, which uh, uh, determine the position in the level two back, uh, backbone, and then you have a backbone for for the first position, the second, the third. And in our case, I'm using a toolbox which we created in Marburg ourselves, and in that case, we use specific connectors for each position. And for example, in the, in the first uh, level one, I have a connector which says um, five uh, prime connector one or three prime connector one. And for the level two, uh, for the second one, I have a connector for the second position. And that's the way you uh, put the different transcription units into the right order for the level two assembly. But there, as I said, there are different ways of um, doing that and using different parts. But in most of the times it's uh, determined by the parts you're using, for example, or the backbone you're using. And now you can create um, um, a multi-gene plasmid out of all these uh, level one assemblies, which we have done before now. So I will just, to make it easier, I will just copy them into um, another folder to make it a little bit easier and more. Um. Ah, okay. Uh, I forgot something, sorry. I forgot to copy a part from my older uh, parts here. Just say one second, you don't have to uh, look on that very specifically. Sorry for that. Um, and then for the, the level two assembly, uh, you can combine all of these and you should have another backbone or vector for having the, uh, this multi-gene assembly. But in my case, it's called like that, can call you one. And then the same procedure as for level one assembly, in, in genius at least, uh, and combining them by Golden Gate assembly. And in that case, because it's a level two assembly, you have to change the enzyme again. Now it says wrong, something is wrong. Let's hope that is correct after, yeah, out of range, now it's correct. And even in that short of time, we have created in silico a plasma with, with three different genes expressed. And um, the, the only thing you would need for that for your, your own project is designing your own level zero parts, uh, insert them in the in the in the Gomoclo or Golden Gate vector, which you can get from the iGen registry, uh, and you should get uh, kind of a, a toolbox specifically for your chassis or for your organism and for E. coli, yeast, cyanobacteria, plants, and so on. You can find them where, and there you have already these. Uh, parts for promoters, RVS, and so on. And then you combine, can combine them with your own enzymes or your own uh, proteins of interest to express them. And then these toolboxes, most of the time, have already the parts you need for that multi-gene assembly, which I showed you now. And I know that was very, very fast, uh, but I just wanted to sh show you more the possibility and how easy it is to assemble uh, to to assemble these um, parts in that way. And if you have any questions or need any help um, to, to design it for your specific project, uh, we can definitely help you in the office hours or you can contact us.
via mail. You can find all our emails on the um, iGEM measurement page. Um, yeah, and uh, I think that's, that's enough for one uh, small webinar. And I'm happy to take any questions. Any questions? I know that was a tough one. Dennis, are, st are you still there? I'm here, yeah. yeah. Okay, because it says screen is disconnecting. I think it, there's a little animation earlier in the presentation. I think that's all. Ah, okay. Hey folks, have you have been, has anybody heard of MoClo before? Oh, oh let me ask. there's one person already knowing it. Uh, you have some questions in um, the Q and A. Ah, oh, yeah. Any paper that you can re recommend for that technique? So uh, one of the papers uh, for for yeast, for example, uh, is definitely uh, the one Dennis already mentioned, um, which is the uh, uh, the Duba paper, and it's. Um, um, uh, this one and even if you don't use yeast you can understand the the basic concept um, of that modular assembly uh, with that paper because that's also the paper where I learned it from but um, uh, yeah that's a, a one one of the papers I could recommend but um, for E. coli if you're using E. coli there's this Echoflex toolbox, for example, which um, um, is definitely a paper I could recommend. Um, and of course, the, for plant or algae people, um, th there's an excellent paper with, with um, uh, which applies the, the Moclo principle and also in the supplementaries of that paper, of that Chlamydomonas paper, you can learn the basic concept of it, even if you don't work with uh, Chlamydomonas. I can show you, uh, oh, no, I don't have access right now. <laughs> um, yeah, so the, the yeast toolkit paper is, is a nice one. This one, highly characterized yeast toolkit for modular multipart assembly. For E. coli, for example, the Echoflex one, if you really want to specifically work with E. coli, and in general, especially the yeast and the uh, clammy one, um, this one, um, have some supplementary figures to really understand the, the basic concept uh, of that technique again. Any other papers, Dennis, you have in mind? Uh, no, I think, I mean, there's a lot, there's, there's a lot of variants and people have different, you know, preferences. Yep. So I think, um, there is a MoClo, MoClo paint paper itself in the title. That one might be good. Yeah. But, I, 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 don't, I, I, I know that, but it's for a beginner, it's t sometimes a little bit, um, tough to, to learn it from that one. <laughs> I think also if you're a beginner, I think, um, some of the companies who do Golden Gate will probably have some good, more ent entry level stuff. So NEB's website, I'm sure, has a little bit. Yeah. Um, Wikipedia but, might. I mean, this is a little bit advertising of my own team, which I advised it, uh, two years ago. But we have some good uh, material on, on that wiki. So um, it's iGEM Marburg 2018. And in that, um, on that wiki, we described several of these um, part collections or these MoClo connections. And we also describe in detail how we designed uh, our toolbox in that case, in that project. So if you want to look into that and there, we also have these slides and these overviews and, and all that stuff. I would put a link into that chat here if you're interested in that. And of course, there are many other iGEM teams which uh, 
have used that technique in a really good manner, but um, this is just a team which I have in mind because I supervised it. Renee, you were also asked why you went with a genius over Snapsheet or Benchling. Aha. Uh -huh. I think this is a, just a personal preference. So I'm using it since 2016. And one feature which I really like, and that's why it is my preference now, is that one click Golden Gate function. I mean, it's quite lazy. <laughs> and um, you, you have to be careful with that because um, if you don't know the concept, how it works and just click, um, it's also not good. So you should really understand the, the concept if you, if you would combine it by hand kind of. And then if you're co uh, confident with that and familiar with that, you can use these, these software tools to, to help you to speed up your process. I, that's the way I would recommend to, to learn it. If there are no other questions, guys, I think we're gonna wrap up. Thank you everyone for your attendance and participating and asking questions. We really appreciate it. We hope we were helpful. And uh, as Renee and I have both said, feel free to contact us, reach out at office hours. We're happy to give you some in input or help out additionally. Um, so thank you so much, everybody. Okay. All right, bye. Bye. Have a good rest of the week, everybody. Stay safe.